when I first started my new job, I was excited, a little nervous, but optimistic. I had spent years building my career and was eager to prove myself. The office had a laid-back vibe, but I quickly realised that beneath that surface there were tensions, especially with one particular person, a co-worker who had been with the company for over a decade. She was an office veteran and, at least in her mind, she had the right to act like she ran the place. I'll call her Karen for this story. I had no reason to suspect anything would go wrong when Karen first approached me, asking me to shred some documents. It seemed harmless enough. She was busy and I was new. I didn't think twice about it. But as time went on, I started to notice things weren't as they seemed. The first red flag came when Karen started treating me like I was incompetent. I would ask questions, hoping for some guidance, and she'd brush me off with sarcasm or just ignore me entirely. I thought maybe she was just a tough cookie and I needed to prove myself. But soon I started noticing a pattern. She would ask me to do things and then turn around and accuse me of doing them wrong, even when I had followed her instructions to the letter. One day, Karen asked me to shred a pile of documents. Simple enough, right? I did as I was told, but what I didn't know was that those documents were important, confidential papers that shouldn't have been shredded. I had no way of knowing, and... At the time, I didn't even think to double-check. I thought she was just trying to offload some minor tasks onto me. However, a few hours later, I was called into a meeting with one of our superiors. Karen was there, of course, and she was already pointing the finger at me. I told you not to shred those, she said coldly, blaming me for something that I hadn't even been aware of. The superior, looking confused, asked me to explain myself, but the words just wouldn't come out. I tried to explain that I was following Karen's instructions, but Karen was relentless. She turned to the boss and said, See, she's not even owning up to it. I felt like I was drowning. The whole meeting felt like a setup, like I was being baited into saying something that would make me look guilty. Karen knew exactly how to manipulate the situation to her advantage, and the worst part was that I couldn't defend myself. I had no idea how to prove that I wasn't the one who had made the mistake. It was clear to me now she was trying to sabotage me. That wasn't the only issue I was dealing with. As I spent more time at the office, I realised Karen had been subtly targeting me. She would withhold crucial information I needed to do my job refusing to train me on certain tasks that seemed essential. Whenever I stumbled or asked for help, she would publicly shame me, loudly calling me overwhelmed in front of the entire office. I couldn't win. If I asked too many questions, I was incompetent. If I didn't ask enough, I was left to flounder and make mistakes. But Karen wasn't done with me yet. It started small. She'd leave file cabinets open, or leave stacks of paperwork sitting on my desk, knowing full well that I would get blamed if something went missing. Then came the rumours. She would go around the office telling people that I was leaving things unfinished, making it seem like I was negligent or lazy. How was I supposed to defend myself? There was no way I could explain the situation without looking defensive or crazy. And yet... The more I tried to keep my head down and focus on my work, the more Karen found ways to escalate her attacks. She began accusing me of misfiling documents, documents I hadn't even touched. The worst part, I couldn't even prove it. I could try to explain, but I knew it would come across as me making excuses. Karen had already painted a picture of me as incompetent, and no matter what I said, she would twist it. The documents she claimed I had mishandled were ones I never even saw before, yet she used that as another way to make me look bad in front of our co-workers. It was an impossible situation. I started dreading going to work. Every day felt like a minefield, and Karen was the one holding the detonator, 
But things took a turn for the worse when she walked up to me one morning with her usual smug expression. She asked me something that threw me off guard. What's wrong with your face? It was a strange, cruel comment, and at first I didn't know how to respond. I had tried my best to stay professional, to ignore her barbs and subtle insults, but this time it was different. Her intention was clear. She wanted to provoke me. She wanted me to snap, to get angry so she could say, see, she's unprofessional. I just ignored her. I had learned that the best response to her was no response at all. But Karen didn't let it go. She went around the office telling people I was ignoring her, accusing me of bigotry for not engaging with her. It was like I had become the villain in her narrative, and everyone around me was falling for it. My co-workers didn't know the full story, they just saw the surface. Karen was the office veteran and I was the newcomer, so who would believe me over her? Things finally reached a boiling point when I made a mistake with some documents. It was a simple mistake, too many copies of something that needed to be shredded, but Karen blew it up like it was the end of the world. She berated me in front of everyone, screaming that I had, Ah, oh, you ruined everything. I was stunned. It wasn't even a big deal. We just shredded the extra copies, but Karen had made it her mission to demean me, to make me feel like I couldn't do anything right. I started looking for another job. I knew I couldn't stay there with Karen continuing to make my life miserable. It was a toxic environment and I couldn't take the constant humiliation anymore. I started looking for new opportunities and eventually found a much better job, one where I was appreciated and respected. When I handed in my resignation, I didn't feel relief at first. I felt anger, anger at Karen for trying to break me, for trying to ruin my career and my sense of self-worth. But as time passed, I realized that leaving was the best thing I could have done for myself. I didn't let her win. And now, as I look back on that experience, I can see it for what it truly was, a lesson. A lesson about standing up for myself, about recognizing toxic people and walking away from them. I may not have been able to do anything about Karen while I was there, but I can now take control of my future, and that's the most empowering thing I've ever done.